Well, if you're a space nerd like me, you'll remember exactly where you were when Israel tried to land its tiny spacecraft on the moon last year. It was an incredible feat to get as far as they got, and now a new mission is underway. The Weizmann Institute is looking to have its craft selected by NASA to launch towards Neptune's moon in 2026 with the task to find signs of life. It's down to the final four, and the Weizmann Institute is one of them, and they've already received some $3 million towards the project, but only two will make it to the final cut for launch. And Professor Yochai Kaspi is leading the team that developed the Trident clock, and he joins me now. Professor Kaspi, first of all, congratulations. And tell us about this watch that you developed and how it's supposed to help you in this mission. Okay, uh, so I'll just begin with a correction. This is a team of, uh, of scientists across the world. This is a, a NASA project. And we have an, one instrument on this, um, on this mission, one of seven instruments. And uh, the instruments that we're developing, as you mentioned, is a very accurate clock that we will, we will be using in order to um, me make measurements of the atmosphere of uh, Triton, the moon of, uh, of Neptune. So what we'll be doing is sending a radio beam from the spacecraft to Earth. And when, it's, when the beam is going to go through the atmosphere, it's going to be um, changed a little bit. And we will be measuring this attenuation with this very accurate clock that we're going to be putting on the spacecraft. Unbelievable. So tell us a little bit about the, the oceans that you're expecting to find. So Triton, um, um, Triton the, uh, the, the moon, like some of the other moons in the solar system, has subsurface oceans. The, what hap what's happening is that the surface is very cold because they're very far from the sun. The interior is very warm, and they contain a lot of water. So in, in between, there's a layer of liquid water, and this is what, we, um, what, what there is on this, uh, on this um, moon. And the spacecraft will be measuring the thickness and mass of, of, this, uh, of, the, of this ocean. Moreover, in some places, this ocean spills out. So we have geysers that are going from the interior out into the into the atmosphere. The atmosphere is carrying the material around, and that's some of the things that we will, we will be measuring with this spacecraft. And without it just being interesting, what are the implications of the data that you might have after the 2026 launch, and how could that affect us here on Earth? Yeah, so it's a 2026 launch and arrived on 2038, and that's actually, it sounds funny, but that's actually a very fast route to, uh, to Neptune. And what we'll be, we will be learning is we'll be learning about the, this subsurface ocean that you mentioned. Um, it might even have life in it, like we have on Earth. Uh, we have uh, life very deep in the oceans where there is no sunlight. And maybe there's a similar effect on, uh, on the, this moon. In addition, we will be learning about the atmosphere. This is a very unique atmosphere that hasn't been observed before on any moon in the solar system. Uh, what's, other, what's also unique about this moon is that it likely did not originate in, uh, in the Neptune system. Right. It rotates in the opposite direction to uh, Neptune, meaning that we're actually learning about an object from outside of the solar system. This will also be something new. So the combination of all these features right. is something very new that we're looking forward that to. That is incredible. We're wishing you the best of luck with that. Professor Caspi, thank you for that insight. Thank you.